What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hicker Scuba Marina. Today we're going to talk about intermediate pressure, what it actually is, and I'm going to talk about a problem that a lot of times we come through as technicians and that we have to deal with, and that's called IP creep. It's basically where your intermediate pressure will not lock into a certain uh, bar or certain pressure, and it constantly creeps up higher and higher and higher. And there's several things that actually cause that. I'm going to actually show you several of the things that can cause it, and some things that you're going to have to be looking out for to know whether or not you have an IP creep. Now, unless Unless you're a gear technician or unless you can get the proper parts for it, you're probably not going to be able to fix it on your own. At least the typical diver's not. You will have to bring it to a service center. But I'm going to show you what that service technician is going to do to try to correct a problem. So basically what is intermediate pressure? If we have a high pressure cylinder, it doesn't matter if it's low pressure, which is a 2400 or an older low pressure at 2250, or a, a standard pressure, which is 3000 to 3300, or a high pressure, which is anywhere between say 3442, all the way up to say 5000 if you're dealing with a carbon style cylinder. So basically we're gonna consider all those pressure high pressure. And let's think for a second, if you was to put your mouth over the valve here, turn that tank all the way on and try to breathe from it, you just simply couldn't. It would be too much pressure. So we need to convert that high pressure to a lower, more workable or breathable pressure, hence what we call intermediate pressure. And that's exactly what your first stage does. It converts high pressure into intermediate pressure or workable pressure so that you can actually breathe it. Now we can actually measure that. All you need is an intermediate pressure gauge. And it's just basically a low pressure gauge that plugs in to say your BCD inflator. Now you can get a hose system that's designed specifically for that or you can get just an IP gauge, and all it does is just through the quick release mechanism of your BC inflator, it pops in. Now, when I turn this system on, I know what the predetermined, from the factory is, the predetermined pressure should be. In the metric system, on this particular reg set, it's anywhere between, say, 9.8, to a 10.2 in the bar system, or if you like the Imperial, it should be around the 145 to say 150 PSI intermediate pressure. So what I want you to do is I want you to watch the gauge. I'm gonna turn it on, and this red dial is gonna shoot up, and right where my finger is, if it'll focus, you'll see the, the blue 10, that is 10 bar, Directly above it's about 145 PSI, and that's the ideal IP setting for this particular reg set. So when I turn it on, you're going to see that needle rush up. Now it's going to lock into place because I have it set to lock into place. However, this particular regulator has an IP creep, and what that IP creep is, is when the intermediate pressure will not stabilize. It will constantly creep up higher and higher and higher, and this can cause quite a bit of problems. It can cause the uh, seat, the high pressure seat in the first stage to wear out. It can also cause the seat, the low pressure seat in the second stage to wear out. So if you've ever, ever had a second stage that was leaking slightly or free flowing, there's a couple of different issues that could be the problem. One, the cracking pressure is set, you know, way too high and it's just free flowing in general. But if you got your cracking pressure set just right and it's still free flowing, it has nothing to do with your actual second stage. It's all in the first stage. That means the intermediate pressure is way too high. It's putting too much pressure or force up against in where the demand valve system is, it's putting too much pressure against that seat and it's just opening it up and allowing it to free flow. So no matter how tight you make this, no matter how much you adjust it, if the IP is not set just right, you'll never get this to, to stop free flowing or bleeding off underwater. So let's actually look to see what IP creep actually looks like. So obviously I can turn on the system and watch the gauge. It's going to go up to about 10 bar. You can verbally hear, or you can hear it, actually I'm sorry, not that one. You can hear it leaking, even the gauge is leaking. Hear the little hiss, okay? So it's leaking out both second stages and the gauge here. But now watch the IP. It started at 10, now we're at about 10.5. So I'm at the 150 PSI. And if you slow it, hopefully the camera will focus here. All right. You'll see it as it focuses in, now we're still climbing. It's got a slight creep in it. So we was at 10, now we're at 10.5, we're going on to about 10.6. And the longer I stand here, that red needle is just going to continue to grow. Okay, now watch this. I'm going to take the pressure off of it. It's going to drop. There you can see it drop below 10. Now it seems like it's stabilized out, but keep watching. You'll see it continue to creep up. 
as it now we're past 10 we're at about 10.2 which is still on the verge because this particular reg is a 9.8 to a 10.2 but you're going to continue to watch it grow it's going to go from a 10.2 to a 10.5 on up and if i sit here long enough that's going to go to 11 bar to 12 bar and eventually you're going to have a catastrophic failure in either your first stage or your second stage and more likely you're going to have it in the second stage before you do the first stage so that's what an IP creep is. It's when it doesn't actually stabilize where you want it to be. So now what I'm going to do is actually break this regulator down, just the first stage, and I'm going to show you some of the issues or some of the causes of an IP creep so that you'll have a better understanding of what is actually happening. Now, if you happen to be a gear junkie and you service your own equipment and you still have these issues, this hopefully this video will help you understand why you're having that IP creep and of course, how you can get it fixed. So let me get this broke down. I'm gonna reset the camera for you and we'll, we'll look at what all the problems are. All right guys, so I've got the first stage disassembled or at least I've got all the hoses off. What I'm actually gonna do is get into the low pressure chamber side and I'm gonna show you what causes that IP creep on it. Um, on this particular model, this one's got what I call a little baseball cap. It's just for cosmetics. It's a little cover that kind of covers up the uh, IP spring here. So I'm going to pop it off real quick. Um, this one takes a rather large uh, Allen head. So I'm going to go ahead and take it off. And this is actually one of the first things that we look at whenever we're dealing with, say, an IP creep. And there's a spring down in here that helps determine what the intermediate pressure is set at. And one of the first things we look at is the actual spring here. Now this spring, if it's not at the right tension, can cause an IP creep. So either one... The spring is bad, we replace it and we fix the, I, the IP issue there. Um, just judging by the spring, I'm not real sure if that's the problem. What I'll actually do is replace this spring, put it back in the system, reset it up to factory specs and see if that changes. If it does changes, then I know that the spring was the problem. Now if it doesn't fix the problem, then obviously the spring wasn't the issue. I'll put the original spring back in. I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to open up the rest of this particular first stage and I'm going to show you some other items that can cause an IP creep. Now this is a diaphragm first stage and this diaphragm right here, this little piece of rubber, this actually seals to the internal part of the housing here and one of the issues is, is if we get debris or anything in there because this is not technically an environmentally sealed rig, debris and water and everything else can get up inside there and if for some reason debris, sand, grit or something like that gets inside of where this little diaphragm is, that can cause an IP creep as well. So one of the ways that we test for that is, is we're going to uninstall uh, the diaphragm itself or basically continue to break it down and we do want to be extremely careful when we do this This is why it's important to take it to an actual gear technician to do uh, Because it is so easy first of all to damage the diaphragm itself And it's also very easy to damage the internal metal part of the housing here Which is actually going to be the third thing that we're going to talk about as far as IP creep so in short Basically what this diaphragm does is it, it helps as we tighten down on the spring or loosen the spring, it creates tension to help adjust the intermediate pressure. Well, the outside part of this diaphragm here, this part right here, actually seals to the internal part of the housing. Now I'm not sure if the camera's picking it up. I can actually already see what the problem is and why that IP is creeping, but I'm going to try to get it close enough. If there's any scratches on the internal part of this housing here, then that air is going to be able to escape around the side of this diaphragm, thus not being able to stabilize the IP pressure, which in this particular reg is the actual problem. And it's not because it's actually scratched, but if you look close enough in there, you're going to see a lot of dirt and debris in there. Now, let me give you a little backstory on this particular reg here. This was actually brought in by a customer. They bought it used from another shop. They didn't buy it from us. And they come in, they said, hey, I bought this used. Uh, I watched them service it, and it, it's just leaking. Can you fix it? And I said, well, let's test it first. Let's see if the cracking pressure is good. Let's see if the IP pressure is good. And, of course, the IP being the issue there, it automatically told me that either, one, the spring was bad, right? 
Two, the diaphragm's bad, which in their case, the diaphragm was actually bad. Now, the reason I know that is because I just put this brand new diaphragm in, but it still didn't fix the problem. So the more I dug into it, I could see that from their old diaphragm, as it was wore out, it was breaking down, it was deteriorating. Over time, it actually melted some parts way up in here. And if you look all the way around, you'll see all those black specks. Well, those black specks are pieces of rubber that's kind of melted or fused to the internal part of the housing. Basically, they left it in a hot area. The diaphragm had basically deteriorated and broke apart. And just from the heat alone, it got stuck up in there. So now what I'm going to have to do to fix this problem is I'm going to completely disassemble this first stage. I'm going to cook it in an ultrasonic cleaner with some cleaner in there, and I'm going to let it vibrate and get all this stuff out because I can sit here all day long and scrub with this little brass uh, pick here and get that stuff out, but I run the risk of actually, even with the brass pick, I run the risk of actually creating scars or scratches on the internal part of the housing. And if I do that, I'm just creating more of a problem by not allowing that to seal because of scratches in there. So what I'm going to do is actually disassemble this completely. I'm going to take the housing, put it in an ultrasonic cleaner, and just let it sit there and constantly cook. I might let it cook for 20 minutes, 30 minutes, up to an hour to get all those small little tiny pieces of debris and rubber out of there. And then I'll pull it out of the cleaner solution. I'll put it in just plain water, clean it up really good, and then I'm going to dry it out reassemble it, and then we'll retest it and see exactly where we come out with the intermediate pressure. But guys, that's it for IP. That's usually what's causing the problem. If you dive a balanced diaphragm system, this is a balanced diaphragm system, it'll either be the spring mechanism where you do your adjustments, it will be the diaphragm, or you will have a housing that either has debris in it or it's been scratched up. Now, in my opinion, when they said they bought this used from another shop and the other shop rebuilt it, I personally don't believe the other shop rebuilt it. What I think they done is they just took it apart, they cleaned it the best they could, they put it back together, and they sold it as a used item at a decent price or a cheaper price. Uh, but I can tell you because I did have to replace this diaphragm, they did not rebuild it because if it they would have, they would have put a new diaphragm in it. But like I said, hopefully the camera will pick it up. You can see all those black lines up in there. It kind of looks like mold and mildew. It's not mold and mildew. It's just deteriorated rubber from the diaphragm. And it goes all the way around the internal part of that first stage. And what that does is that prevents that seal of that diaphragm. And so your intermediate pressure will not lock in. Thus you're always going to have a leak and you're never going to get your first stage adjusted where it's at. But guys, I hope you liked this video. I hope it kind of uh, answered some questions about IP cracking and things like that. If you want to see more videos that are technical related in regulators, how they work, how things are adjusted, drop me a comment down below what you'd like to see and we'll try to get a video made for you. But guys, if you like this video, if you found it helpful or found it, say, educational, do me two favors. Definitely share it and definitely smash that like button for me as well. Guys, I want to say once again, we really appreciate you watching all our videos. Your support by watching our videos keeps us in business, and it, it allows us to get more information to you through uh, our YouTube platform here. So guys, once again, definitely we appreciate you watching these videos. You guys are the reason that we make videos. Because as always, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter, like us on Facebook, pin us on Pinterest, subscribe to us here on YouTube, and as always, guys, we appreciate your business. Guys, we really appreciate you watching our videos. If you liked it, make sure to give us a big thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, simply hit that subscriber button for us and make sure you hit the little bell to turn on all notifications. If you want to see some other cool videos, make sure to click these links here. They could be scuba tips, they could be diving videos, search and recover videos, or gear reviews. Once again, guys, we really appreciate it.